What's going on guys and welcome back to Gina the Mark V Golf. Today I'm making a video which I hoped I wouldn't have to um, and I never foresaw it coming. Gina has a problem. Her fans come on constantly and stay on and sort of rev on and off and on and off for like 10 to 20 minutes after uh, the engine's off. When I plugged in my diagnostic uh, scan tool thing it said that it was a problem with the coolant temp sensor so what have I done with it that's what we're going to be replacing today now I've uh, been struggling to find the correct coolant temp sensor and also the locations of them because both the Haynes manual doesn't seem to tell you properly it only seems to tell you for diesels for, for some bizarre reason and online is useless right before we get cracking with the video uh, this is a little time jump uh, just to say it was a success um, so that's always a positive, um, but there is something that is quite important uh, you need to do if uh, your car develops this issue, as long as it's a 1.6 FSI, which is what Gina is, because uh, I can't comment on anything else. But um, I've searched online uh, for the part that I was looking for, and I got this. Uh, I searched on Euro Car Parts, put in my reg number, um, so it knew what type of car I had, and I still got this. Uh, this is the wrong type of sensor. I'm not sure if it's for uh, a diesel engine or uh, a GTI model or something, but uh, it's just wrong. Uh, what you need is a gray one. So this is uh, one that came off. Uh, you can tell the difference inside. It's only got two pins. The green one's got four. Uh, so just be wary of that. Um, I ended up buying two before I realized that actually I had got the right sensor um, in when I was looking at the engine bay. Uh, they were sending me the wrong ones or rather I was ordering the wrong ones. So I mean that is entirely my fault um, But uh, it is something which I'm sure other people could uh, Make the similar sort of mistake as mine. So remember you want a gray one. You don't want a green one uh, The green ones. It's not for this car. Um, so anyway, that's it now On with the video. What we need to do first is jack up the car, axle down the car Take out the splash plate which is uh, just under the front bumper because uh, it's much easier to access um, and then take it from there. So I'll catch up with you when it's all jacked up. leave the jack there as an added uh, precaution. Right now it's time to remove the bolts holding on this plate on. It's literally just a piece of plastic which stops stuff from coming up. Um, so I think it's a T25 and then we'll put that on my drill and uh, we'll undo them. So now all those screws are off, it's just a matter of, there we go, getting rid of this thing. And if we open up the bonnet, we should be able to see a lot more of what we're doing. Now, the pesky little bugger that we need to get is, just trying to see it on camera, and I can't now, there. Can't really show you from uh, this angle. But if you look underneath, just here. Now there are two temperature sensors. There's one underneath where I showed you, and there's also one just there. If you can see that, and I'm guessing it's the one underneath which is gone. But if it isn't, obviously I'll just try the other one, and uh, we'll take it from there. Now to uh, disconnect it, we first need to disconnect the wiring loom from it, which you just need a flathead screwdriver, it should be a pretty simple uh, connector to undo. So uh, I'll do that first. Right, that's all done now. Now um, I did kind of have to butcher it because the clip actually holding it on was, well, broken. So, uh, you can see here it's a little bit mangled where I had to ram the screwdriver up, but the actual connector inside is all fine. So we'll just double check that with our uh, new sensor before we bother about taking the old one out. And look at that. Oh, try not 
do it with one hand's quite hard, like a glove. So now we know we've got the right sensor. Now we need to go about getting the old one off. Because, uh, sensor's still there. We've just taken off the wiring loom. Now the sensor itself is held on with a retaining clip, which clips somewhere around here, um, which I'll try and show you now. Oh, it is there, like a metal clip. It's a bit uh, blurred, but you can see what I mean, which holds the sensor in this holder thing, uh, which is just a little elbow at the end of the radiator uh, going into the coolant pipe. So we've got to remove this thing, which I'm guessing would be relatively straightforward because, I know this is a very big close-up, but if we can get a flathead screwdriver just under there, it should just yank out. It will be a little bit rusty, as you can see, but uh, that's the only thing that's really holding the sensor in. So that clip is out now. It was just a matter of sort of digging at it with the screwdriver for a minute. It literally came out no problem at all. Now this is part of what I call my oil kit. It's literally just an old washing up bowl because it was cheaper than buying one of those drain pans. Um, and I'm only going to use this, uh, don't worry, oil hasn't come out of the coolant fluid or anything, um, just to try and catch any drops or spurting out uh, coolant as I change over the sensor because obviously as soon as I take the old one out, uh, coolant will start leaking out. So it's a matter of plugging that hole as quickly as possible. Right, we really do have a hot look going on, but hopefully now you should be able to see what I'm doing. Couldn't get a decent camera angle, but then I thought, got a GoPro, might as well use it. So, we have ring and uh, the new uh, sensor. Put the ring on in the appropriate place. And now, here comes the fun part. Let's see if we can do this. There it goes. Lots of coolant came out. Hopefully I've got some more. There. That's on. So I just had a quick look at the GoPro footage. Um, not a lot of it actually made it to camera, so I'll try and explain basically what happened. In short, coolant went everywhere. Um, because I figured I wouldn't have to do this. I depressurize. Luckily though, it wasn't hot, and I knew it wasn't hot because um, engine hadn't been running for a while so I had, there was no worry about that it was warm but it wasn't hot um, this is the old sensor and you can see it's all corroded and it's so I'm guessing that this is the one that was uh, not working anymore and consequently sending the fans into overdrive mode obviously no idea now so it's all a matter now just reconnecting up the uh, uh, up the loom showing on the end and then we'll start the engine and uh, see what fault codes come up. And scan. Take your time, mate. Take your time. What we'll do is we'll clear those codes. Erase is now done. And. We'll disconnect and start her up. We're off. And we're coming back on again. Okay, so basically, long story short, that didn't work. So as you can hear, fans are still going. Um, that was a complete and utter failure. So we've done one temp sensor now, and although it looks a bit grubby, it probably was okay. There's one more where I've showed you already, so we need to see if that one's broken now. So we'll, we'll give this a clean up. Uh, you know, the sensor end looks okay. And then we'll uh, stick it on this one, because we now know that this wasn't actually faulty. Uh, I'll catch up with you guys in a second. So the fans are still going. I've disconnected the wiring loom as you can see down here and this one's got a plastic cap or clip for some reason. Um, so now round two, it's depressurized now so it shouldn't come spurting out. Uh, 
exact same again. Let's see what happens. One thing that did occur to me uh, was it may be that it was actually still that sensor and it just needed a hard reset. So I've disconnected the battery now. Um, also, the fans were just annoying me. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just reconnect up this loom which I've taken off, uh, leave it for about a minute or so, reconnect it, start her up again, and see if the uh, fans persist. Okay, the whole taking the battery out hard reset thing uh, did not work at all. So what we've got on, the new temp sensor, which uh, I purchased, is under here, which you saw me uh, take out and spurt coolant everywhere. Um, we realized that that was not the issue, so we swapped that with the temp sensor here, uh, which leaves the original temp sensor from here in my hand here, and it's yellow, and I'm not sure if that means anything, or if, you know, I probably shouldn't have been switching them around or what, but you know, learning day, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Let's reconnect the battery. Now, fingers crossed. Not gonna lie, I'm not gonna bother with uh, checking the OBD port. We're just gonna go straight for it. Aircon is off as well, just in case that makes any difference at all. Uh, no fans are on. Now let's listen. So far, so good. You know, I think we might have done it. We might have done it. Being quite a few warning lights on the dashboard at the moment because it's saying like, you have no traction and your steering wheels in there. Ah. Well, there's no fan now. So as it turns out, it wasn't the bottom one, assuming obviously I'm correct. It was that one that was the problem. I wonder if it's meant to be yellow, or whether that actually is turned because, you know, it's screwed. Either way, it's test drive time. Right, so we're back. I have changed into something that's a little bit more, you know, street friendly as opposed to just working clothes. I ran the diagnostic using my little tool again and, uh, it still flashed up with no error codes or anything, so we're going to take it for a test drive, get the uh, engine temperature up, uh, and then we're going to go to Tesco's, because Halfords is now shut, um, and pick up a little bit more coolant, because obviously when it spurted out, I lost some. It's still above the minimum uh, mark on the uh, tank, but it isn't at the max, and obviously the more coolant you have, the better. Uh, it's, it, is it dangerous uh, for the engine? No, it's not. It's well within its boundaries, but I just want to top it up. And it seems like a good excuse as well. I also need to go to Tesco just to get some food. And, um, but we're going to go a bit of a longer route and just see what it's like. So uh, we're going to boot up the car. Give the uh, fuel pump time to prime, as I always do. No fan as of yet. Right, so now we are up to operating temperature, um, which according to the dial is 90, but I know is uh, around the 80, 85 mark. Um, I think 90 is just a round number that they like to have in the center of the dial. Uh, up, no uh, overly loud fans. I'll pull over now. Just the car behind me. And we'll have a listen. Nope, nothing at all. Oh, I'd call that a success. So, I mean, the problem was a little intermittent before. Uh, it wouldn't always do it, uh, but it was 90% of the time a problem. So I think we can almost certainly say that this has actually solved it, uh, which is brilliant. Um, because uh, I am fully aware that while I did purchase wrong sensors, um, if I had got the right one, uh, the total cost for this would have literally just been 
£8.38, which was the cost from GSF car parts, which I cannot fault at all. I'm not sure how common this fault is, um, but when I did my research there was quite a few on forums, but there was no video um, explanation or uh, descriptions of it. Um, so I hope this will be really informative for anyone that has this problem. Um, or if you just want to change your sensors because you're getting a warning light on the dashboard, uh, you can sometimes get that as well, although I didn't for some reason. Uh, I had to run diagnostics. Um, so I don't know. Oh, this is fun fact. I had a crash on here in the Corsa. About two years ago now. Well, memories. Here we are at Tesco's. Let's pull up. And... Uh, No fan. That's pretty good, I think. Silence. I no longer have uh, people staring at me because my car is making a racket, not through exhaust, but just a Sounds like a jumbo jet taking off. Well, that's a pain. They've only got screen wash. Guess that's tomorrow's job. Can we also just stay repping uh, my boy as well as car throttle? So as you can see, when I got to the shelves, they had windscreen washer fluid uh, and oil, but no coolant. Um, it's not a big deal. I mean, I'll just go to Halfords tomorrow. As I was coming back across the car park, I uh, heard a fan going. I was thinking, oh God, no. No, it hasn't worked after all that and all this video. But it was someone else's. Uh, it wasn't a golf either, so uh, I got to laugh. Now I understand that there is uh, quite a big gap at the moment between uploads. Um, for anyone that knows me, uh, OG supporters of Snygate before I really started doing the whole car thing, uh, I was never very good at uh, uploading or keeping to a schedule at all, uh, so just basically appreciate stuff when it comes out. So yeah, the rewrap is still coming, but obviously I wanted to get this all sorted first. Um, and I know it sounds weird, but this is almost like a little performance, not upgrade, but fix. Um, because there was occasions where I could feel and the engine sounded a bit different. And that's because it was over fueling. Uh, so the air fuel mixture was wrong. Uh, it wasn't pulling like it should do. And twice uh, it struggled to start. Um, and when you looked at my digital readout, it said that the oil temperature was minus 20. And considering it was like 25 degrees outside, um, and you know, I'm not in the Arctic, uh, I didn't really believe that. So consequently, the air fuel mixture was completely off because when it's colder, air is thinner. So it was basically pumping in far too much uh, fuel uh, with far too little air. So hopefully now that will all be fine um, and she'll, I mean, she does pull like she should. Um, she's not a performance car, but you know, uh, it's all right, does bits. Uh, the, as I said, the remap is coming soon, but next on the agenda is wheels, actually. Um, and I never really considered doing this uh, until I was speaking to people and, and saying, oh yeah, Golf GT wheels would look really good on that. Um, and I agree. So I haven't bought them yet, but I've found some uh, secondhand, which then I'll refurbish and I'll obviously do a whole video on refurbishing them as well and I think they'll look really good in gloss black. Uh, they are quite a way away so it will be a bit of a road trip up there. Also I'm going to be uh, doing a video on how to clean my car, uh, well not how to but just how I do it. Um, and also uh, the interior and all the bits I've done to the exterior and just summarise them all. Um, oh look, it's someone in a Civic and that's not a Type R, that's just someone with, with a big exhaust. What a lad. No, oh, Type R's are cool, but uh, you don't rag it around in a Tesco's car park, that's just dumb. But anyway, I'm rambling now, so um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little, more, it was more of a how-to video, uh, this one. Uh, I hope it was informative. Um, stay tuned for more updates um, regarding the golf, and I'll catch you all later. Goodbye.